Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to call the uh, regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen uh, to order for Monday, May 17th, 2021 at 7.03 p.m. And we'll start with the uh, roll call attendance. We'll start with uh, Darcy. Darcy Dale here. Jamie. Jamie Knudsen here. Rosie. Rosie Kennedy here. And myself, Sean Farrell here. And Bill Olson is here, there right? Is. There he is. <laughs> Way here. here comes Mary Alice. <laughs> Perfect. And Mary Alice is coming on. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Mary Alice is here. Now it's official. All right. Um, so should we do the Pledge of Allegiance again? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. All right. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And, to your and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. nation. Under God, Under God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Thank you, Joe. All right. Um, we have uh, a few board and committee openings. Uh, the Hamilton Historic District Commission has one opening. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals has one opening. The Open Space Committee has two openings. Uh, and now we have our time for... Any public comment for anything that's not already on the agenda tonight? Mm -hmm. All right, seeing that no one spoke up, uh, we have uh, Selectman Town Manager reports. Uh, Darcy, you have anything to add tonight? Yeah, actually, um, uh, let me see. Uh, well, when are we going to organize? Do we organize after just, the consent agenda or before the consent? Just after the consent agenda. Okay. No, I, I think I'm I think I'm okay right now. Okay. Uh, Rosie? Um, sure. I have a few things. Um, first thing I wanted to talk about was um, going to the Patton Homestead last Saturday to um, talk with Kaylee and have an, a tour of the Incubate um, business that's out there now. And I'd like to say how impressed I was by, by the setup. It looks like a very um, earnest um, endeavor. And I must say that the homestead, the interior has been spruced up with paint and the floors have been redone. It just looks beautiful. And I briefly met the person who's going to be running this and I wish it very much success. And I must say I'm jealous that I don't have that sort of a view looking out my back window when I'm when I'm working and then the second thing the second thing I did was take a tour um, the directors were very nice and gave um, me a very special tour of the patent archives and it's actually a lot more extensive that I had than I had initially thought and I was very impressed and very moved by all of the um, um, archives, the all the items in the archives. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, just next steps for um, thinking about town hall for the future, um, thinking about doing some fundraising. Nothing is official. We don't have um, a building committee. We don't have any formal um, idea of how we're going to go about this, but I have done some research. And in fact, um, the Mass Cultural Council provides tours for um, historic preservation and um, some, some funding for um, historic preservation. And I have a, a phone conference arranged for tomorrow with one of the directors over there. It'd be very interesting, get some more information. There's also the National Trust for Historic Preservation that also um, has grants available and I intend to inquire more about that. Um, and then also thinking about a nonprofit, um, thinking about how um, people could start that up and uh, a friends of the HTH Hamilton Town Hall, thinking about that and how we could um, <laughs> we could have a friends group organized to to raise funds. So those are the things I'm thinking about future future ways to uh, maybe find some more funding for the town hall and hopefully at some point in the future 
it could be brought back and have a more favorable um, result. Thank you, Rosie. Yeah, I think I think that's all good good thoughts there. Um, Jamie, anything tonight? Uh, other than echoing Rosie's comments on uh, Patent Homestead and Incubate, no, I don't have anything further. All right, thank you, Bill. Anything from you? Well, I just wanted to acknowledge this is our first meeting since our uh, our elections. I wanted to thank the uh, town clerk and, and all the town employees and all the helpers that get us through the election. That was very successful. Thank you for uh, Brian Shaw for running against us, and you know I, I hope he comes back and volunteers for other things in the town because um, obviously um, he had a lot of voice out there that people supported him and everybody else. I just wanted, yeah, I think I thought it was a good process. I, I want to thank the town hall building committee because I think they did everything we asked them to do. Uh, it's unfortunate it did, did not pass, but we, you know, I, while I was in support of it, um, I think we heard loud and clear that um, our citizens felt they were picking a choice between spending money on the town or spending money on the school. So. I think we need to do a better job to uh, in the future to show how we can do both in this town and they're not, they're not one or the other. We weren't asking people to choose. So um, so I think, yeah, I think we need to talk about next steps and maybe we'll schedule on a future meeting to uh, talk about next steps in the future. But um, I just wanted to acknowledge that, yeah, I think the town hall building, they did everything we asked them to do um, and every charge we gave them to do, they succeeded in doing. So thank you for your efforts. Thank you, Bill. I, I mean, I, I echo Bill's sentiment about all of our poll workers and our clerk and everything. They they always do a really outstanding job, always very welcoming. And I really appreciate all the hours that they put in there from kind of dawn till dusk, really. Um, also like to thank Brian Shaw for running. And like Bill said, hope that he continues to uh, watch and, and get involved. So we need more of that. So, uh, and also I'd like to add that uh, I see John is on the call. And I just want to say to John that I saw uh, the other night, I was watching my favorite TV show with my kids, but half watching it. And uh, I looked up and I said to my wife, that guy looks just like a guy I know. It's a friend of mine on the FinCom. And she said, it kind of does look like him. And I said, can you rewind it? And <laughs> come to pass it, there's John on my TV set. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to say congratulations to John before we got too far into the meeting. If you don't know, John was on Shark Tank the other night. So uh, oh. good, luck, good luck with your, uh, your, your golf clubs. Well, th uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Sean. And, uh, and, and to you and, and Bill, uh, belated congratulations on your reelection. As, as you can imagine, the last couple of weeks have sort of been crazy since we <laughs> found out we were actually going to air really right after ATM. And then, uh, um, yeah, it's been a, uh, in the last three days, it's been sort of, uh, in, in, but. Uh, <laughs> Can we ask what up, happened? But, did they, did, uh, did one of the sharks eat you up? Were they, were they nice to you? We did, uh, we did get a deal, yes. Oh, congratulations. We, that's we wonderful. We survived the tank. Oh, that's, <laughs> who, who signed up for you? Or who did you uh, sign up? It was uh, guest shark, uh, Daniel Lebeski. Uh, from Kind the, Bars. Uh, the, yeah. the founder of Kind Bars, yes. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, I wish I'd Thanks. seen that. Yeah, we've got a we got a celebrity in our midst now. You can uh, <laughs> you can check it out on Hulu if you've got oh, it. Oh uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> ABC.com. I think they've they've got it up there as well. But uh, you know, uh, I'm done with the promotion because it's, <laughs> oh, that's it's, it's awkward to begin with, and it's just it's yeah, that, that's the one thing that's not in really in my wheelhouse is uh, <laughs> it's self promotion, but uh, hard to avoid now, I guess. You need to right. acting next. <laughs> um, All right, so uh, let's see, uh, Joe, any report from you tonight? Uh, no, I just. I had a brief report that I sent to the board earlier tonight. I think the biggest thing on there that people will be happy to hear about is that the governor announced uh, today that he'll be lifting a lot of the COVID-19 restrictions that have been put in place over the last 14 months, uh, effective uh, May 29th, and he will be lifting the emergency declaration uh, effective June 15th. As a result, I have already reached out to town council and to Bill Melville at uh, <laughs> Excuse me, uh, to Bill Melville at HWCAM. I, I know that uh, Bill and I want to sit down and talk about how we can, can how once we return to in-person meetings after J June 15th, um, we can continue to offer a Zoom component uh, because I think that having this uh, has helped really uh, bring people into the meetings and helped get us uh, more participation from the public, uh, general public. And I think that's a good thing in government. So we're hoping to be able to offer um, live in-person meetings with the Zoom component so people who can't get out to the meeting can still participate if they wish to, so. Yeah, I think that's great. That's the, that kind of hybrid, I think, is something we want to do from now on. 
All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, and now we have our consent uh, agenda. We have on the consent agenda, approve the minutes of the following Board of Selectmen meetings. Uh, do, 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 we did that one already. Uh, Selectmen's OML. Selectmen's OML seminar, uh, March 29th, Selectmen's meetings, April 5th and April 20th, and joint Board of Selectmen and FinCon meeting April 12th. And then approve a request for the road races from uh, youcanrun.com. And they've done previous races in town, so. Can we hold that one, please? On the You Can Run? Please. Yep. I make so, a motion to uh, approve Selectman's OML seminar, the March 29th meeting, um, the April 5th meeting, and the April 20th meeting, and the joint meeting with FinCom on April 12th. Well, you also get um, Bill Bowler's uh, the temporary appointment extension to 123121. Oh, I don't, I don't have the amended agenda. So yeah, if we could add yeah. that. Mr. Bola's term is due to run out very shortly here. Um, as you are all aware, there are a couple of things that have come up a couple, including a couple of uh, chapter 40B applications, Pels that, that dropped. And um, being that he is the most experienced person on the ZBA and that he had agreed to do it till June, he has agreed if you want him to, to stick around till the end of December. So we do. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for the board, I apologize, but. <laughs> <laughs> can I second that motion? Yes, you can. Uh, okay. All right, so any, any further discussion on any of the non-held items? All right, uh, and a roll call vote. We'll start with Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, Bill. William Olson, aye. Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. Jamie. Jamie Kinson, aye. And myself, Sean Farrell, aye. Uh, and then we have the held item that you can run. And Joe, refresh my memory. Have they done this run with us before, or is this? Yeah, it's 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 two runs. One's uh, coming up sooner. One's later in the fall. Both of them are done by this uh, organization, YouCanRun.com. And it's not just in Hamilton. And they they start in other towns, so the part of the race loops loops through. In your package, you should have had the the race loops for all three. Um, they were put was put forward to me by the police uh, station. They've already reviewed them. We, we were told that, um, that everything's in order as it has been in the past when they've run the races before. They don't anticipate a big problem for it. I don't know that this is a uh, you know a high volume turnout type run. It's just uh, something that they do. I, I know one of them goes through Wenham and one of them goes through I think Manchester and Essex. Um, yeah, I think so. so. Yeah. Was you you would I remember was this the one that you had held last no, time no, no. This, I, I don't know I, you know I apologize we've just had so many things to review for for this meeting our executive session and um, I just have not reviewed this as carefully as I would like and so I'm wondering if um, I know we have a lot of things to talk about tonight would we be able to just put this off until our next meeting and I will have reviewed it and um come back with any questions joe does that tie them up with any Can we table uh, it? i don't think so if i remember correctly there isn't a race coming up like right away that uh they need the approval right right away um at least not in the next year is anybody here to talk about it or not no okay mm. typically these they haven't done that before i think so that's they weren't asked to be but um uh it's not gonna well, that's not it i, I I'm, I'm trying to find the uh What's the date of it? I can't remember what the first date was. That's what I'm trying to find for you right now. Hold on. Not on, the, um, not on the map. It's, it's a little confusing. I, I, I don't I don't really see dates. Trying to find I see. It, in our yeah, it doesn't April, have a date. It doesn't have a date. And so right. I, I would like to find out a little bit more about it. All right, Rosie, if you want to uh, if you want to table it, go go right ahead. Please, yes, I'd, I'd like to table this until okay. our next meeting so that um, and perhaps we could be provided some more information um, dates and and um, what this is um, what this entity is representing and so forth just more information about it okay how many okay. runners they anticipate that. that sort of thing okay perfect thank uh, you. yep thank you all right so now we have uh, to move on to our agenda uh, and our first item on our agenda is to organize the board of selectmen this is a yearly process that we do just after our town elections where we vote for chair vice chair and the clerk i would like to nominate bill olson and rosemary kennedy as co-chairs for this session because 
Um, it's, I think, um, a uh, collaborative approach emphasizing gender equity. Um, it, we also want to acknowledge that uh, these times that we're in are sometimes um, more, the more hands, the less the work. Um, and I know it would allow for more flexibility and uh, nimble responses as things emerge. Um, it's also uh, an exercise in collaboration and cooperation. So I I'm putting that out there. I would like to see, um, uh, I would like to nominate Bill Olson and Rosie Kennedy as co-chairs. All right, uh, is there a second from anybody? <laughs> okay. that, would be Jamie, that would be Jamie, right? <laughs> So uh, I will second it, but just- All right, uh, and then uh, any further discussion? Yeah, I, I really think, um, you know, you guys got to put your money where your mouth is too, you know? You're talking about human rights and gender equity and collaboration. I think it would send an excellent signal to the people who voted us in that we they voted for the status quo. I think um, they probably, want us to continue working together. And I think this would be an excellent way of illustrating your commitment to the values that you've put forth in the human rights um, document. And uh, also just in the spirit of collaboration and uh, cooperation. I think it would be a good move. All right, any other discussion? Uh, I think it's a great suggestion. I don't know that I was prepared to think about that tonight, but I appreciate the thought thoughtfulness of it. And I'm, you know, I'm excited that we're going to be making the decision later tonight to change the name of the selectmen to the select board. So I think that is a, we're going to be moving in the right direction. Um, you know, I, um, put my name out there, you know, as, as to be a chair and not be a co-chair. I don't know if we have a precedent for having a co-chair versus a chair, but, um, it's a good, it's an interesting thought process and, uh, but I'm not prepared to think, I'm not sure I was prepared to think about that tonight. Put you on the spot. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts before we take a vote? All right, um, we'll do a roll call vote. We'll start with uh, Darcy. Uh, for what? Oh, I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> my emotion, I, <laughs> Darcy did <Okay. laughs> uh, Jamie. Uh, Jamie Knudsen, nay. Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Bill. A boy Molson, nay. And Sean Farrell, nay. All right, uh, I'll entertain any other motions uh, for uh, chair or I guess chair. I, I'll, I'll, since I'm kind of relinquishing my duties here, uh, I'm gonna nominate, since Darcy already has, I'm gonna nominate uh, Bill Olson for the chair. Second. Anyone? Thank you, Darcy. <laughs> Knew it happened sooner or later. Yes. All right. Uh, discussion um, for Bill. Uh, I think Bill's been around a, a little bit of time. He's been the vice chair. Uh, he's done excellent in that capacity. Uh, I think he does a good job of, of listening. Uh, he may not always share our same opinions, but uh, he's respectful of them. Uh, and I think that uh, he'd be a good chair. My, I do have a concern about attendance and um, uh, tardiness, so that's why I thought it would be a good, you know, a good way to, um, you know, have some backup. But that that's my main concern because in a, in a you know, pandemic year, um, not to be able to depend on on leadership um, because of you know traveling or or whatnot, that makes it kind of hard. But so be it. <laughs> That's my concern. That's a valid concern. Billy got to show up on time more. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think I've been late. I think I maybe I missed two or three meetings in the past in the past 52 weeks, but I think we've all sort of, but I don't, I don't think I've been late for meetings. So, um, but um, no, I mean, I would be honored to be, you know, once, once like Sean said, I've been on, you know, been on the planning board, been on the select board. Um, and, uh, you know, I will, you know, I will take what, you know, the words that Darcy and, Rosie used tonight in terms of we have to be respectful of all people and make sure we sort of, you know, manage from the middle and take all things into account and, um, and hear and listen to each other and, uh, 
make sure that uh, we do the things in the best interest of the town. So, but I'm, I'm ready for the challenge for the next year. So I appreciate the nomination. All right. Any other comments? Yeah, I, I do have a concern that it's the boys against the girls. I, I need to see more collaboration. I really do. I think it would be nice if instead of having three to two, let's talk a little bit more. Let's like Bill says, let's meet in the middle so that we can get five to zero votes with not much effort, but with some understanding and um, commitment. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I, I it's hear you. Three to two men against the women all well, the time. Well, see, I, I, I don't see it as the men against the women. I just, I see it as differences of opinion. I mean, if I was a woman, I would have the same opinion. That's, I think that's just <laughs> the way it is. I mean, it's, it's definitely not, there's no bias against your gender, Darcy. I mean, I grew up in a single parent home with my mother. And if you've met my wife, you know that I have no, <laughs> no issues with gender. Um, but uh, nonetheless, I do, I do think that more collaboration is, I think it's always good. So All right. any other comments, Jamie? All right. Yeah, I'll just add there. I mean, Darcy, you're absolutely right that the sum of our votes probably a, a pretty small percentage, but some of our votes come down on uh, gender lines. But I think that it's pretty clear um, that they're just based on a difference of opinion on uh, the substantive issues. Um, it is, you know, it's not uh, three males having, you know, an opinion where, uh, you know, the rest of, you know, where a large part of the, uh, you know, female world, it would be opposed to that, I think. And, and I think we do, you know, we do try to allow, uh, there's a lot of discussion about things. And I think, I know I do. And I think I've seen from Bill as well, try to uh, reach across the aisle, as they say, and, and try to come to a common understanding. And sometimes it doesn't work. And we just have a difference of opinion. Well, that's where the work comes in and you collaborate. But anyway, I think we're out of the four corners of our <laughs> vote here. <laughs> right. All right. So let's uh, I'll call the I'll call the vote then. Uh, and we'll start with uh, we'll start with Rosie. Rosie Kennedy. I. Uh, Darcy. Darcy Dale. I. Jamie. Jamie Knudsen. I. Uh, Bill, you vote for yourself. <laughs> Wayne Molson. I. Uh, and myself, Sean Farrell. I. All right. Uh, vice chair is next. I would like to nominate Rosie Kennedy for vice chair. I'll second it. It would be nice to have some allies. Women need allies. Oh. All right, uh, discussion on Rosie for vice chair. I think she would be excellent. And I think she's worked harder than all of us on in the last two years, just um, really, hard charging, <laughs> getting things done, um, you know, easy to work with. I think she deserves that office. And um, I think it would be wise for us to support her. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I, I agree that Rosie's done a great job. Um, worked really hard and appreciate her, her participation on the board. Um, so just want to echo those thoughts from Darcy. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of be redundant here, but Rosie really has kind of dove in, you know, head first here and, and, and done great. And I think she's, she's come a long way and, and really looked at all the kind of information and really strives to do what's best for the town at, at all times. So I really appreciate that. And I know that she, she really cares. And that's, that's kind of what, I mean, we all care, but you know, not that, not that Rosie cares more than we do, but I think that we know we all care a lot, but Rosie really wears her heart on her sleeve. So I really appreciate that. All right. Uh, we'll call the vote then. We'll start um, with Darcy. Darcy Dale, I. Jamie. Jamie Knudsen, nay. Uh, Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, I. Bill. Um, yeah, well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to vote nay, but I'm going to tell Rosie that I'm going to you know, in the future support her. And I think <laughs> further collaboration, but um, I don't think this, this year I'm gonna support uh, um, Jamie on this. My All God. Right. 
uh, and myself, Sean Farrell Ney. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, uh, another nomination for vice chair. I make a motion that we nominate Jamie Newton for vice chair. All right, uh, I'll second that. Any discussion for Jamie? Um, yeah, he's been a great addition to the board. Um, I, you know, he's, he's, he has an attorney background, so his, his knowledge, his uh, thoroughness, uh, his thoughtfulness. Wow. Jamie doesn't speak without really wow. getting into detail and understanding things and talking to people in the community. Uh, he's involved in a lot of things, and I think he'd be a good asset and continue to have him involved in more detail um, on the board. So that's why I'm nominating him. All right. Uh, and I think Jamie would do a, do a good job. Uh, you know, he's, he's a little newer to the ranks, but he's really thoughtful about his uh, approach to things uh, and very calculated with what he says. And, and I appreciate that. All right. Uh, any other discussion? All right. We'll call the vote. Uh, we'll start with uh, Darcy. Darcy Dale Nay. Jamie. Jamie Knudsen, aye. Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, nay. Bill. William Wilson, aye. And myself, Sean Farrell, aye. All right, we have a new chair. Congratulations, Bill. And congratulations, Jamie, and vice chair. Now we have a clerk. Any nominations for clerk? So I'd nominate uh, Ro Rosie Kennedy for clerk of the select, select board. All right, I'll second that. I'll nominate Darcy Dale. I'll second that. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's, <clears throat> uh, Rosie, I'm going to assume since you're nominating Darcy that you're not accepting Bill's nomination. I think Darcy has um, an incredible eye for detail and will do an excellent job. Okay. So um, I guess point of order here, I'll, we'll rescind the motion for uh, Darcy's nomination for clerk. Uh, and we'll go with Rosie's nomination uh, of Darcy for the clerk. Uh, and did, did somebody second that one? Did you oh, second it, Darcy? Did. Yes. All right. Um, I, I agree. I think either Rosie or Darcy would have done a great job at it. Uh, and I agree with Rosie that Darcy is kind of the devil's in the details with things. So uh, I don't think there'd be much discussion. Uh, we'll just call the vote. So we'll start with Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Bill? William Molson, aye. Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. Uh, Jamie. Jamie Knudsen, aye. And myself, Sean Farrell, aye. All right, congratulations, Darcy, on the clerk. Uh, and um, just want to say, just it's been a, a pleasure being the chair for the last year. I really appreciate uh, all the work that all of you have done, and look forward to continuing to build the relationships in the future with you guys. Uh, Bill, it's your meeting. All right. Great. Well, thank you. Um, so we're going to get into uh, the next topic on the agenda, which is planning board associate member appointments. So we have uh, two people here tonight um, uh, in the packets. Bill. Um, well, actually, I think just Pat's here tonight. Hey, Bill, would you just mind uh, if I can interrupt for a second? Uh, FinCom is on with us to talk about our uh, finance director that's joined us tonight, and they want to open their meeting, so we're going to have a quick joint meeting with them. Okay. I will uh, call to order the uh, Finance and Advisory Committee. Uh, looks like we've got all five members present. We'll do a quick roll call. Start with uh, you, Valerie. Valerie McCormick, aye. David. Dave Wanger, uh, aye. Here, here, here. Uh, Nick. Nick Tennyson, here. Christina. Christina Shankar Grove, here. And John Pruidge, here. Awesome. Sorry, right, but go ahead. That's right. Uh, so, Joe, I don't. I have a copy of the original agenda. So, if anything is amended from here out, just let me know. But, yeah, um, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the main amendment was this. The um, was the finance director discussion right now with the FinCom. So, and and yeah. Alex is here. All right. So we'll do that first. So we have in our packet we have a resume for Alex. I'm just scrolling to right now here. And then we also have a, uh, sorry, I, was out of, I had mine out of order. So it was for Alex and we also have the, um, uh, the employment agreement. So Joe, can you walk us through um, 
what, um, what, how far the agreement is along and what decisions we need to make on it tonight? Well, I mean, so we're, we're, uh, I know that, that the board likes, uh, the board likes to have the input of the FinCom. Um, we've made an offer of employment to Alex. Alex has actually already signed that offer. I have not, because I was waiting to uh, have confirmation from the board. Um, I discussed this both with uh, John Coolidge, the chairman of the FinCom, and with uh, Sean Farrell, the then chair of the board of selectmen. And um, the discussion was to have you both boards meet uh, jointly tonight, just to talk briefly about um, Alex. Alex was uh, brought to us by our consultant and uh, interviewed by a screening team that include a screening committee rather that included Nick Tenson of the finance committee, uh, as well as uh, Diane Katz, who was the, uh, well, Christina's coming back in. Uh, at Diane Katz, our uh, interim uh, finance director, uh, town accountant, um, uh, the finance director uh, from Ipswich, Sarah Johnson, and um, Michelle Carroll, human resource director. So um, they all unanimously recommended that uh, I interview Alex and said that uh, he thought they thought he'd be an excellent candidate. I met with Alex last Monday. Um, and after that meeting, I subsequently uh, offered him verbally the, uh, the position of finance director. He could start at the beginning of uh, July, uh, June. Uh, we originally had talked about June 1st, but um, after we had that conversation and I started to tell people, Alex, uh, Alex went back and told uh, his current employer that he was seeking to leave and they reminded him that his boss is actually gonna be away the week of June 1st. So uh, he's gonna, we've amended that start date to June 7th so that uh, he can uh, actually you know, man the ship there from one last week, but he will come in a couple of times that week and um, meet with folks here. We're gonna schedule some four hour blocks of time for him to come in and meet with folks in the town and uh, town staff, et cetera. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, the two boards want to talk to Alex, if you want to hear from the FinCom next, but definitely. Uh, well, let's, if it's okay, Joe, if I can interrupt for just a second, Bill, Mr. Chair, I apologize, but maybe we can just say hi to Alex since he's been, he's been sitting here patiently and if he can introduce himself, that'd be great. Uh, I'd be happy to. It's a pleasure to meet you all. My name is Alex McGee. Um, I am uh, really looking forward and excited about this opportunity. Um, I think that uh, Hamilton has done a really good job um, with financial management in the past. A really strong sort of uh, financial history. Uh, look to pick up where things um, maybe need to be tightened up a little bit. And, uh, you know, really looking forward to sort of joining the team. So um, I'm happy to, you know, answer any questions questions or have any sort of discussion that we're looking to have tonight. Um, but it is a pleasure to meet you all. Well, thanks, thank Alex. You, Alex. Meet you. Um, th thank you, Alex. And if I might just for a, a, a second, first of all, great to meet you, senior resume, and also talk to Nick, who I, I know you've had a, extensive conversations with. Um, you definitely seem, seem well qualified. Um, uh, more of, I guess, a statement that maybe I'll, I'll turn into a question, but uh, just from the, the FinCom perspective, we definitely um, uh, lean on the town finance director in terms of our access to data and help. And, and lean is probably an, an understatement. Um, so maybe if you could talk uh, just briefly uh, just about uh, experience you have um, in, your, in your prior role, um, prior roles with uh, um, town committee collaboration, that kind of thing. Sure. So, um, so I work in, for a city right now, and so we have a, di a slightly different form of government, but uh, you right. know the concepts are basically the same. Um, providing as much information as possible, sort of being uh, acting as sort of the hand uh, for committees. Um, you know, they're elected; they um, you know are requesting information in order to sort of set policy and uh, set direction for you know the town or you know where I'm now the city. Um, and so it, it's incumbent on me to be able to deliver that, you know, in a timely fashion. And so, uh, you know, the, the real, the strategies that always have a real, you know, my finger on the pulse of how things are going um, have sort of built in automated reporting. So I'll always have a handle on finances. So that way, if, uh, you know, the FinCom comes to me with a question or a request. It, it isn't a huge lift for me to dig it up. It's more of a um, you know, sort of how quickly can I get this to you? Um, so, um, you know, if we're talking about sort of a general strategy, you know, my strategy would be to have, you know, as much automated reporting built out as possible, and then, uh, you know, develop a strong collaboration with the finance committee and, um, 
you know, sort of all other sort of groups around town. Yeah, great. That's great. And and ideally, we would have the uh, the, the finance director attend probably as many of, of our meetings uh, certainly as possible. Um, we we generally meet every every other week, yeah. um, sometimes more frequently. But uh, um, the uh, the more attendance we can get from the finance director, because usually uh, for every question uh, we have, there's probably three updates we're not even aware of that we <laughs> yeah. we uh, that we may need to uh, to keep our sort of finger on the pulse. Um, so I just I just sort of wanted to highlight is that is something that's that's certainly very important for, for our committee. Yeah, I mean I, I'll just echo. Um... That is something, so night meetings are sort of a part of uh, this lifestyle job that, you know, a career right. that I have embarked in. And uh, yeah, I agree. The the attendance at those meetings will be sort of, it'll be required. And I, I'm aware of that. And definitely, you know, it's something that I do now and something that I will continue to do into the future. Great. Yeah. I mean, I, I looked at your resume as well, Alex, and impressed that, you know, sort of you sort of grew within the city of Lowell and had many positions. So you sort of understood many aspects of government and obviously you were like there and, and were able to work with many different departments. I think the only thing that, that, that concerned me on your resume was just your address. And I just want to make sure with all these night meetings, you're coming from Westford Mass. So obviously the commutes will start to get, you know, more and more, but as long as we, you know, get your commitment on participation on, you know, Zoom makes it easy, but as we meet more and more in person, I just want to make sure, but obviously you were traveling to Lowell as well. So, but that was one thing I saw that was sort of oh, far, far away, but yeah, it's not a problem for you. The commute, I, I've done a couple of trial runs on the commute um, and uh, it will, it'll be fine. Great, no, excited to have your skill sets on board. So, so Alex, I guess just be, besides your kind of role as the financial director, there's obviously accounting and stuff like that. We have Diane there now who's doing a great job in the interim, um, but there's some other kind of initiative that we've, we've started, but we haven't followed through with. And, you know, when you're on, we're kind of expecting some movement on those at some point. A couple of years ago now, we started uh, redoing a bunch of our financial policies. Uh, we got a grant uh, to work with the state uh, and redo uh, a lot of our financial policies. We got about, I'd say, maybe halfway through. So there's still quite a bit left to do. Um, and obviously, we don't expect them to be overnight. But, you know, I, we'd expect the kind of FinCom and the Board of Selectmen to work with you on kind of recommendations from those kind of templates and financial policies that the state's recommended to us. Uh, and the other thing is uh, with our, our budget documents, um, a lot of our citizens aren't munis experts as well as many of the people on our boards and committees. And we've gotten a template to kind of revamp our budget documents. Uh, it's quite a initial um, Herculean task to kind of convert uh, munis into this document, but kind of once we get it, uh, we can just kind of repopulate it every year and make it a lot more readable for our citizens. And that's kind of the ultimate goal is to have it more digestible for everybody in town. So when they look at the budget, they can really understand it instead of just a printed munis report. So we've moved to that a little bit now, but there's still a lot to go on it. Um, and just kind of wanted to see how you were um, or if you had any thoughts on kind of working through that stuff in addition to your kind of other roles that you have as the finance director. Yeah, um, both great points. Um, definitely, you know, happy to pick up uh, where the sort of the financial policy, I don't know if it's like a makeover or sort of just like, you know, figuring out sort of some best practices to get implemented, but definitely, you know, those will help strengthen a lot of things, uh, a lot of, you know, checks and balances around town. Uh, so yes, definitely want to pick those up and uh, budget specifically. Um, I've been through a number of budget cycles in the city of Lowell. We have a massive GFOA budget. It's about 600 pages right now. And so, um, you know, picking that up, uh, sort of implementing a similar sort of model that connects, um, it's sort of, it, it's a holistic budget, right? So um, it's built off of, you know, the numbers that come out of Munis, but it's put into a digestible format. And so, um, not only, you know, does it contain sort of like uh, reports that are put into, you know, in uh, like a digestible format, but it also puts in explanations of what different departments do, uh, you know, what sort of revenue sources fund, what kind of programming. And so um, implementing something like that, um, it, you know, will be a great start. Um, and so when I met with Joe last week, he showed me a template of a sort of a new budget you know, that would be working towards transitioning towards. And I think that's a fantastic start and we could even take it further from there. And so 
um, I do have a fair amount of experience in uh, doing these budgets. When I was in, you know, my first year in Lowell, we uh, presented the first GFOA budget to the city council. And so it was a, you know, a part of putting that together that government finance, finance, financial officers association, which is sort of a, uh, a, you know, a, a association for, um, you know, reviewing budgets essentially. Um, so, um, you know, I have a lot of experience um, with these and we've improved on ours over the years that I've been in Lowell and look forward to that opportunity here. Great, thanks. Sure. Um, if, if it's okay, would I, can I speak? Hi, Alex, um, I'm Darcy Dale and I'm on the selectman. And um, I just wanted to know, have you ever worked for a small town before? I have not. I've worked um, exclusively. My, my time in government has been spent in Lowell in a number of different roles. Um, I do live in Westford, which has a, um, you know, a town meeting form of government. And, uh, we have a select board here as well. So where I live, uh, yes. Where I work, no. Are you, is uh, Westford a direct democracy or a representative town form of town meeting? An open town meeting. Oh, that's wonderful. That's what we have too. Yeah. And you're aware that the budget is literally Joe's budget. It's the town manager's budget. So you'd be working yeah. really closely with Joe too. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Rosie, do you have any uh, comments or questions? My comment is welcome, Alex. Great. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you all again. You know, I really am looking forward to some new professional challenges and collaborations. Great. Jamie, anything from you? Yeah, same. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, John Pruitt, I don't know if you're speaking for everybody in the FinCom or for any other comments from anybody in the FinCom. Yeah, welcome. I mean, I know Nick, obviously feel free to jump in, but you, you've talked to Alex extensively, but I don't know, David, Valerie, or Christina, if you... Uh, um, have any questions for for Alex, um, or just want to introduce yourselves? Uh, now's the now's the time. Alex, well, it's nice seeing it's nice seeing you again, and uh, I enjoyed our conversation. And uh, as, as you heard, I was uh, positive about it, and pa passed that on to Joe. So uh, I'm excited about the op this opportunity for us as a town. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Alex, my name is David Wanger. I'm the geezer on uh, the FinCom, uh, and I, I too welcome you uh, and hope that we have a, a long relationship. Did I understand in your introductory remarks, you suggested some things needed tightening up? Did I hear that from you? <laughs> um, the, what, what I meant by that was the, um, the so I dug through the DLS gate, the um, Municipal Data Bank, which is a website that the state provides, and some excess levy capacity is starting is starting to slide. And getting that um, getting that movement slowed down is important. Um, so I don't I don't know if tightening up is the right uh, phrase to use, but um, you know, figuring out why you know that capacity is slipping, how we can sort of slow down on expenses and increase revenues is gonna be sort of key to figuring out how we can uh, maintain excess levy capacity rather than watching it slip. Uh, you're, you're familiar with uh, the fact that Hamilton and Wenham share a regional school district. Yeah, and, yep. And it's around 60% give or take of our, our budget. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to take some uh, sensitivity in terms of balancing the town's uh, parochial municipal interests with the uh, educational interests of the school. We're making progress in terms of cooperating, but uh, that's got to be something I, I hope you're sensitive to going forward. Sure, yeah. Uh, um, if you'd like, I can address sort of um, we have a similar, there's a, there's a very sort of uh, firm line between the schools in Lowell uh, and the city operations. And it's, you know, it is imperative that the city operations are funded how they, how they need to be as well. And it, it can't always come at the, um, school funding can't always come at the expense of city operations. So, or, or town operations, you know, um, they have to, they have to both be funded properly. Um, and so where that, where that balance falls is sort of like where the real hard work is, I guess. 
Um, but yeah. I am sensitive to that, yes. I appreciate that. And I, I would respectfully uh, urge you to uh, look at our bylaws because they will help you understand the framework and the interrelationship between uh, the manager, the, the board of select persons to come, I guess, and, uh, and FinCom. Uh, and it's important that we maintain, although we're very informal here, but it's important that each recognizes the role of the other. And you're going to be a facilitator mixed up in those relationships. Sure, okay. Uh, and uh, John, I, I don't know if we're gonna seek to make a recommendation tonight. I, I of course, uh, uh, welcome Nick's participation in the selection committee. I understand that, uh, uh, Joe, you're, you're the hiring authority here, I think, and you've, you've hired Alex. So <clears throat> a recommendation at this point is probably moot, but uh, we look forward to uh, our growing relationship and we'll certainly have an opportunity to uh, judge each other in that period. So again, welcome, Alex. Thank you. I mean, I, I Alex, would- uh, uh, Alex, Nick here. I, I wanted uh, something you mentioned and I'd like to uh, expand on it is, you talked about the revenue side of our, um, our needs. And I know that you've done some revenue or some uh, grant uh, uh, proposals. Could you speak a little to that? Sure. Um, yeah. So, so this is um, so in Lowell, I've worked on a number of competitive grants, um, mostly at the state level. Um, the biggest ones have been uh, something that's called the Accelerated Repair Program, which is um, it's a program that the Massachusetts School Building Authority runs, and it is sort of a funding mechanism for repairing major building systems that have um, gone into you know various states of age-related disrepair. Um, and so we, for a number of years, did not have any applications into this program for, I'm not sure what the reason behind it is, but uh, we found that th this program existed. And so uh, I prepared um, a number of applications. It was 22 the first year. And um, since it has grown, I think we have somewhere around 28 or 29 that are that will be applied on a rolling annual basis. And so the first year we applied, we were awarded eight projects that were um, projected out at around $13 million worth of work. And so, um, you know, that offsets money that we would have had to have spent, um, you know, out of our op or out of our capital budgets really, but you know, it's money that would have come from the city. Um, so, you know, those have been a boon to get these systems repaired where we have, you know, schools that are leaky, have leaking roofs or are cold, you know, the boiler systems are not reliable and are not functional very well. Um, additionally, um, the state, um, another grant that, you know, we were awarded that I was sort of the chair on was the MDP program. Um, it's the Massachusetts Vulnerability Program. It's another plan, uh, program that the state runs um, preparing municipalities for adverse impacts of weather events uh, in the, the sort of age of climate change um, where, where more um, intense weather events have bigger impacts on municipalities. And so this allows communities to become what they call MVP certified. And then it opens up the door for being able to apply for what they call MVP action grants. And so action grants are uh, open every single year for municipalities to apply for and um, they let you do basically construction projects that are related to a climate vulnerability in some way. And so this can be if you have flooding problems or if you have what are called heat, um, like heat islands, you know, in areas. Um, basically, uh, if you have uh, culverts or dams that are problematic, it lets you um, address those needs without, you know, funding it all on your own capital uh, plan. And so uh, you know, always seeking out these kinds of grants, grant programs is really important. It's something that, you know, I would really advocate for is finding ways to uh, lean into the state's funding sources for getting some of this work done that will likely need to be done, you know, either way in the future. 
Thank you. Certainly, yeah. All right, so Joe, um, we need to make a motion or do we? Yeah, as David pointed out earlier, uh, oh, I'm sorry, John. Uh, yeah, just because they Bill, if, if you don't mind, I actually, even though it, it, it's all sort of happening contemporaneously, um, I still wouldn't mind uh, having a vote on a FinCom rec recommendation. So I would uh, certainly from our committee, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, if it's appropriate, like to uh, um, have a recommendation vote. If you're okay with that, Bill. Yes, go ahead and make a, have someone not think I'll make a motion. I would uh, I'd entertain a motion to recommend Alex McGee for uh, finance director. Second. No, so moved, excuse me. Second. Is there a second? Any further uh, discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor? Start with uh, you, Valerie. David Dunn. Oh, I'm mute. sorry. You're on mute, David. Yes, I, 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 I muted myself. Uh, I'm going to abstain. I want to explain why. I don't want it to be viewed as a negative, Alex. But since the decision has been made to hire you, uh, I don't know that a, a recommendation to hire you is uh, in sequence timely. And I was serious when I said we'll all have an opportunity to evaluate each other. You, FinCom, FinCom, you, uh, as we get to know each other and work together. So I just wanted to explain, and now I'll cast my vote if I may, John, sure. uh, by way of an abstention. Uh, Valerie? Valerie McCormick, hello and welcome. And you may not see me again. I'm on my way out, but <laughs> I would vote aye. <laughs> Nick? Nick Tenson, aye. Christina? Christina Shank Hargrove, aye. And uh, John Prulich, aye. Mr. Chair, if I may entertain a motion for our board, and I'll, I'll wordsmith a little bit and say uh, I make a motion to, to welcome Alex McGee as our financial director. I have a second. 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 Uh, any further discussion? Um, I think my only comments we'll make is that so June 1st, Joe, that's been confirmed. So we're not. It's, it's June 7th. Uh, it's it's June 7th. Uh, the week of June 1st, uh, Tuesday, June 1st, uh, Alex will come up a couple of days, spend four hours or so uh, meeting with folks, doing some meetings and getting to know things. We're going to give him the extra week just because his his boss in Lowell is actually out of town that week. And if we take him that week, then there'd be nobody to run the shop. And uh, out of sensitivity and respect for his boss, he asked if he could have that. And I, I agreed. All right, so June 7th is fine. I think we could agree with that. I think I only had three other comments to make was one is that, uh, yeah, like Sean said, we have our financial policies. I think we have dra drafts of all of them, although we've only approved like two or three. So, um, Joe, I would invite you to uh, yep. uh, 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 an agenda sometime in June or July so to dust those off, bring those uh, to the meeting so we can um, work on those over the next year. And then uh, and obviously let um, Alex, no, we're also about to engage on a master plan. We're going to probably need his help on that as well, too. So we've just approved funding for a, a master plan, and, uh, and we're going to welcome your uh, expertise on that. And I also like your skill set and your resume that uh, of your you manage. I like how you said that you manage city website branded to create unified voice. So hopefully you can bring that. Uh, it's not probably on your job description, but I hope you can bring that unified voice into town hall and help us uh, get that message out to the out to our, our population citizens. So thank you and uh, welcome aboard. And so I think now we can do a roll call vote. Any other discussion? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Um, okay. I wanna know what ha what was that glitch that the FinCom didn't get a chance to give a recommendation before you hired anybody. Um, I'm wondering how that happened and what, what we can do so it doesn't happen again. Because, you know, everybody has their role to play and, um, so how did that happen? John, do you uh, wanna? Well, yeah, I, I, can, I can give my perspective at least. And part of this is it was why we, you know, in discussion with Joe and, and we were certainly on the same page here that we would have someone that is, that is uh, and that was Nick who was going to be, you know, helping Joe and others, you know, vet candidates. Um, 
And, you know, the timing, you know, I think I'd always stated that, look, if the timing would work out, we'd have a lead candidate available um, that met with our sort of cadence of meetings, great to have the person in front of the full committee. That being said, um, uh, I, you know, the employment uh, uh, um, decisions move quickly. And we didn't want to lose a really good candidate because right. potentially couldn't get our meeting together, which our meeting wasn't happening until sort of three weeks after ATM. That being said, Joe had mentioned that, you know, the board was, uh, the select board was going to meet with Alex before any, you know, final decisions and the, the ink was, you know, dry on the actual contract. It was not going to be signed until um, the select board, as well as, you know, full FinCom would have a chance to, to meet with Alex. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if it had worked out that we could have met with Alex prior to an offer being made, that's mm -hmm. great. And, you know, some of that might fall on me in terms of uh, better organizing the can calendar. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't want to lose out on a good candidate because of our uh, meeting cadence. Yes, I, that, that makes sense to me, but hopefully we'll go ahead you know, um, forward, um, making sure that everybody has their um, their say, I guess. But I do want to note, folks, that uh, not only, of course, have we not had an opportunity prior to this evening, uh, or I at least have not to meet Alex, but I've not seen his resume. Yeah, I have. So that we've we've essentially been precluded from making any subjective evaluation. So that was the reason for my abstention. The um, resume was included in the packet, but so right. it did go to the select board, but. And, and we, we sent it as matter of course to the chair of the FinCom, uh, chairs of FinCom when we sent it to the board of select. So I, I thought it would, would have gotten to the whole FinCom, I apologize. Oh, now I, was, Nick, was Nick voted from the FinCom to represent the FinCom or he just volunteered to assist? Joe, what was that process? Just so I understand that process. Before. No, we, we, we agreed that uh, Nick would uh, would represent us. Yeah, okay. So, uh, but but in, 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 in terms of the uh, the resume, uh, that was forwarded to me. I'm looking now. It was because it was just forwarded to me. I was the uh, uh, the weak link there. So uh, apologies to my fellow committee members. I, I'm not seeking to cast blame, but I, I'm merely taking the position. Nick's appointment. Uh, Nick's appointment should not have been taken as an abdication of the rights and participation of other FinCon members. And, and my dog agrees. <laughs> Funny that sounded like disagreement. I was going to say, I, I speak dog and that was disagreement. You don't, you don't know the dog. Right? <laughs> Actually, I know the dog too well. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> So I, I will I will cease uh, making any further comments again, uh, other than just reiterate our joint uh, and unanimous welcoming of you, Alex, to the town. Bill, did Definitely. we take a vote yet on our uh, vote? Dar Darcy? Darcy, that Darcy yeah. was speaking. That was is that it, Darcy? Yes. And then uh, Rosie or Jamie, anything else to add before we vote? No. Okay. And then uh, Joe, is that the proper form of the motion to welcome, or do we need to confirm the appointment? And I'd ask you to vote to confirm the appointment. Um, that's that's the proper, please. I, I will say I'll, I'll I'll amend my motion to welcome and confirm the appointment of Alex. Second. Uh, Dar Darcy, second that. We'll do a roll call vote. I'll start with Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. Uh, Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, Jamie. Jamie Knudsen, aye. Sean. Sean Farrell, aye. And uh, William Olson, aye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you Alex. Thank I appreciate you. it. Welcome aboard. Thanks, everyone. I, I look forward to working with all of you in uh, all sorts of different capacities. So I do appreciate the spirited discussion as well. So uh, looking forward to getting started. I appreciate it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. Um, so I'll reach out to you tomorrow. We can talk about uh, the week of the first at some point. Does FinCom want to um, just think I want to uh, end their meeting? Say goodbye. Yeah, I will. Uh, I would enter a motion to adjourn. So move. Is there a second? Second. All in favor. Uh, Valerie has actually had to, had to jump. I know she's got a uh, conflict starting at eight. So um, uh, roll call vote on adjournment. Uh, Nick, start with you. Nick Tenson, aye. 
Dave Langer, aye. Christina Shankar Grove, aye. And John Prillage, aye. I'm going to go watch Shark Tank. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and thanks, y'all. everyone. I'm going to have Thank to jump. And goodbye, Alex. Bye, friends. Goodbye, Alex. All right, so Joe, are we back to now the uh, associate members for the well, planning? Associate planning board members. Yep, you have you have right. that in your package. So, yeah. so it's a little bit of a left turn here, but last meeting we approved an associate member, um, but now we have two associate members. So I believe that member is being um, moved up to a a, a a member, correct? So could you walk? I don't know who can speak to that. Rick, maybe Rick Mitchell's on. Yeah, Rick Mitchell's, I think, here for that, for this purpose. Um, I believe you guys appointed Emil at the last meeting. Um, you, since then, you've had uh, somebody leave the board. I believe the planning board will be meeting shortly to recommend somebody, possibly Emil, to move up to take that seat. Um, in the interim, they interviewed uh, two other folks. Actually, that there were three people to talk with, but they interviewed two. One withdrew, and um, they're before you tonight. Rick? Uh, that's you. correct. Right, that's okay. correct. So Emil will become... Uh, Dan Ham uh, resigned, so Emil will uh, become a full-fledged member and then run for um, uh, the next in the next election, next May, run for position for a three-year term. And then uh, we have um, Paul Norton uh, here with us tonight, who is an associate. Uh, the planning board has approved him uh, unanimously, as well as Casey Ryder. I don't think she's with us tonight as uh, two associates. And again, the planning board um, unanimously recommended um, both Casey and Paul. So procedurally, are we allowed to have three associate members before we appoint one to the, to the board? I just wanna make sure we don't do things in the wrong order here, Joe, but I, I have no problem appointing them. I just I just wanna make sure we understand that Emil sort of has to. I, I think that's a good point. I don't know if we can do that. Rick, do you do you know? I well, I, I think you could do it this way since uh, Casey's not with us tonight. Uh, you could hold uh, her nomination. Her we can hold. We can hold it to the next meeting, and by that time, the planning board will have voted um, for Emil to be on the uh, planning board as a full-fledged member. Okay, and then, that makes sense. We'll I, feel more, I feel more comfortable with that just because I don't want to have three associate members and have a problem. So let's uh, let's for next meeting, let's have both those moves. Um, Moving uh, a meal and then moving on Casey. So today we'll just consider Pat. No, so Pat is with us today. Sorry, Pat. <laughs> and, uh, so Sorry. let's let, let him get his uh, his nomination. I, I was the one who recommended Pat. I know Pat. I um and so uh you know I um you know so I, I could speak in support of him and, and his you know he works uh, at New England Bio Labs, uh, which is obviously a great use of the greatest state in uh, in Ipswich, and he deals with. Uh, a lot of things in that that town with building buildings and going in front of the planning board. So he's a lot of experience um, working in in a similar town, similar things. But, but as a resident of Hamilton, I thought we could utilize his expertise and his knowledge. And uh, you know, he's got two young kids. He'll be here for a long time in, in this community, and, and he wants to start volunteering and giving back. So um, I support him for um, this position. I thought I think he'd be a great asset to us. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I met Pat briefly about a week ago now and, and was impressed with just the brief time that we spent together. So I, I'm totally on board with the recommendation. It's an easy interview so far. Right. Pat, you want to introduce yourself? And, uh, yeah, yeah, so I, yeah Pat, Pat Norton. And uh, so, yeah, only just in Hamilton for two years now. It's our second year in town. And like Bill said, two young girls. Um, one, one is at the Winthrop school as a kindergarten, uh, the other is about to turn three. So we plan to be here for quite some time and, uh, and yeah, just see this as an opportunity to get involved, learn, learn more about the town and maybe have a positive influence. Um, at Biolabs, I'm, I'm part of the facilities and engineering department. My background is engineering, chemical engineering. I've developed a lot of facilities, uh, taking a leadership role here with our sustainability efforts. So, um, working a lot with the conservation, basically touching all the bases for the for the town reps with the planning board the the building department the board of health the conservation commission design review board um also involved with the board uh, the trust reservations the greenbelt folks and um uh and all of our neighbors <laughs> so uh yeah i see i see as an opportunity having worked with all those departments to to kind of you know you see the good and the bad right and, and how they work together and so maybe um 
maybe bringing a different reference point into the into the group. Great. So I think uh, is there any further? Uh, so I think we need to make a motion. So could someone make? A I'll motion? make a motion to appoint uh, Pat Norton as the planning board associate member. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, no discussion, just really a, a big thank you to Pat for throwing his hat in the ring. We really appreciate it. It's always good when we get new people uh, in different perspectives, the more the merrier. All right, so we'll go with a roll call vote. We'll start with Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, Sean Farrell. Sean Farrell, aye. Uh, Jamie Newton. Jamie Newton, aye. I'm Bill Olson. I, uh, my, the company that I work for works with the company that Pat works for. So and not to have a, a perception of a conflict of interest, I will have to abstain on this vote, but, um, but, but I'm glad that he passes for 2 0. Oh, so um, thank you, Pat. No, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Look forward to working together. Thanks, Pat. All right. Thanks, Pat. You can uh, jump off or, or stay with us. All right. Moving on, so we have to table the second um, associate member. Joe, do we have to make yep. any motion? Um, yep. So I will, I will accept a motion to table the uh, nomination of the second associate member uh, until next meeting when we will also consider the uh, nomination of a permanent member. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? So Rick, that makes sense, right? Next week, next meeting, we can do both. You'll meet in the meantime. Yeah, that's uh, that's fine. I, I don't think that um, you uh, there's an approval uh, needed for Amol. Um, you've already approved him as an associate. Once a board member resigns, they automatically fill the vacated position. Correct. So it will be just Casey Ryder. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Darcy Dale. Darcy Dale, aye. Uh, Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, Sean Farrell. Sean Farrell, aye. Jamie Knudsen. Jamie Knudsen, aye. And Bill Olson, aye. All right. So next item on the agenda is the Verizon License Continuation Agreement discussion and vote. So Joe, you're sharing your screen here. Yeah, I'm sharing the screen here. I just, uh, we're looking for the board to approve the language that's in front of you here, um, uh, that uh, the town of uh, Hamilton will uh, extend the Verizon Massachusetts um, when, uh, cable license agreement by the term of one month while we uh, complete uh, the public hearing process to finalize the uh, license agreement that's been negotiated. Um, according to our council, uh, Bill August, on this matter, um, if you can just approve the during the extension period, the town of Verizon will abide by all the terms and conditions of the current cable license agreement. The extension period will be for one month, commencing on May 23rd, after which the CLA will be terminated. The parties may, however, further agree, uh, agreement for one or more additional extension periods by written agreement, and the extension will not constitute a waiver or compromise of any right or claim either party may have under the cable license agreement. They, Bill said that we don't need to have a you know anything more formal than this. We just need to notify them once you take a vote that you did so. So okay, so moved. Second. Any further discussion? No, and this is just, and if it, everyone didn't know, this is because the, our advertisement in Salem News didn't run when it was supposed to, not not to our fault, but it just kind of pushed us out. Plus, we had we couldn't have Bill Melville there at one meeting, so we're we're a little bit in arrears on it. But this should bridge the gap. And yeah, timing's fine with it in terms of the we're not going to have to do another month after this. No, this no. should be good. The, uh, the, the, yeah, no, it's already running on the paper. Salem, Salem confirmed the, uh, they, they confirmed this time that they got it into the paper. So, okay. All right. So, roll call vote. Any, any other comments? Go. Darcy, please. Darcy Dale, aye. Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Sean. Sean Fair, aye. Uh, Jamie. Jamie Knudsen, aye. And William Olson, aye. Joe, do we have to sign this or is this just a vote? It's just a vote. Um, they they were, will take electronic uh, uh, correspondence to extend it by one month. So I'll just I'll notify them tomorrow that the board voted unanimously to extend it by one month so that we can have the hearing and finalize the agreement next month. So they'll be happy with that. Okay. All right. Next item on the agenda is 
water rates and i see that tim olson is here so joe is tim going to speak to this yes he is and i will try to find the um i'll try to find the document that he shared with you that we shared with the whole board too as well while we're doing that tim yeah page uh it's page 40 <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm trying not to, to scan through all the pages i'm trying to uh, pull it up differently there we go um tim you there yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm just waiting for the, if we can get that up there. Um, it uh, boils down to, we've had a couple of years now, um, we've appropriated retained earnings and we just haven't used all the retained earnings that we thought we would need. So if you look at fiscal 20, uh, the actuals, um, the retained earnings is about 217,000 um, that uh, the town appropriated to balance the budget. Um, when it came in with the four, when the four commitments came in, uh, as you can see down on the bottom of the page, the surplus deficit, uh, we had about a surplus of about 199,000. Um, so really out of those retained earnings, we appropriated 217,000, but we really only needed uh, roughly, you know, 20 some odd thousand dollars. Um, same thing in fiscal 21, uh, we, appropriated about 327,000 in retained earnings. Um, and if you could see the surplus down below is 279,000 was, um, was un, you know, unused or unneeded, I guess, at the time. So um, what, it, what it's come down to is, you know, we, the last couple of years, uh, we've had uh, COVID last year, uh, numbers were up, uh, usage was up. Uh, you can see by the commitments, the quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four commitment, they're all higher than fiscal 20. Uh, fiscal 20 also, also had the, the old water rates. It was prior to us changing the rates. Uh, so we've had a couple different uh, things going on over the last uh, two years. And so looking at these rates for fiscal 22, um, I thought talking with finance, um, the best way to try to project um, our uh, revenues was to average of the last three years. Uh, so you have old rates and then you have um, COVID with new rates and then you have, um, you know, then you have a projected or I, I guess fiscal 19 is old rates as well. So I took the three last three years projected out what our commitments would be over the, uh, the four quarters. And um, it seems like uh, to balance the budget that was um, asked of me to do so, it, we would need to appropriate about $265,000 in retained earnings to balance the budget um, I, and to hold the rates where they are. Um, considering that we didn't use as much retained earnings over the last few years, uh, I thought that might be a better uh, solution uh, this coming year. Um, I did confirm the numbers with finance and uh, they did agree that we probably could hold off a, another year uh, without um, adjusting the rates, just because of the the amount of retained earnings that we have in our in our uh, in in the bank. I guess if you what, want to call what's it the that. total retained earnings right now? Uh, the total retained earnings, I think it's a right around what um, I don't know if I have it on this sheet. Um, That's all okay. I don't know. Nope, I don't have it on this sheet. So the total retained earnings, according to finance, was right at the, you know, we're with that five, four or five percent. Um, we're actually above that. Um, and using the two hundred and sixty five thousand, we would still be above that. Uh, and that's the minimum that we wanted to, you know, hold in that retained earnings. Just and, and, and more so just because of the last couple of years and not needing the funding that we appropriated. This allows us to keep our water rate for at least another year the same. That's correct. And, and we still maintain our 5%. That's yeah, correct. it's actually more than 5%. I want to say that, um, you know, the 5% be somewhere around $400,000. I, I believe we're in the six to $700,000 range in, and, and, and six, six, return six, retained seven. earnings right now. And so even if we, even with the appropriation of the 265 in this FY22 budget, um, even if we use all of it, we'll still be above 5%. Um, that's the good news. Um, I think that we wanted to bring this back to you because um, 
the board made it very clear last year that you were going to revisit, we were going to revisit this every year going forward after you had had a period of many years of not making any adjustments. So we just want to uh, kind of get used to being in the cadence of looking at it every year, understanding where, where the numbers are, where we're going, and whether we need to make an adjustment and show folks that when we don't think we need to, we won't. But if we, if we do, there'll be a demonstrated reason as, as to why. It, and the idea would be to catch small changes quicker so that you only have to make, if you make an adjustment, you, have, you can only have to make small adjustments, so. I mean, I think it's prudent to maintain our water rate. I think that we don't, you know, with the three-year average with the pandemic being in the middle of that. So it makes sense not to sort of make any drastic decisions now until we have more data. Um, the fact that we have we saved over 200 and, 65,000 over the last two years. So we're not really spending more than we sort of allocated. We're just shifting it. We're just shifting it forward a year. So um, I think it makes sense to sort of, yeah, let, let the, citizens, the citizens have already paid for the, for that water rate. And so, and so let that retainer sort of balance it out for now. And, uh, and well, then, like I said, we'll revisit it next year. So any other comments or questions? Um, but I would like you yeah, to understand what that, what that dollar amount is. So I can follow up with you later, Tim or Joe on. Yeah, yeah, five absolutely. Percent. I know uh, there's another spreadsheet that uh, the finance committee uh, or the finance department has that uh, we can, with the 265,000, uh, we can, we can uh, identify the amount of retained earnings left for sure. Uh, any other comments from the board? Um, I mean, I think this is, I think this new kind of practice we've got of reviewing this every year is just fiscally responsible and best practice for, for everybody involved, for the town, for the citizens, everything makes everybody aware of what the rate is if we talk about it every year. Plus, you know, this year we can see that we don't need to raise the rate. And if we do need to raise it next year, it, you know, it's in kind of a gradual slope instead of <laughs> ramping up like a roller coaster, like we have in the past, because we hadn't changed the rate in so many years before uh, five years ago or so when we did adjust the rates. Right. Yeah. Do we need to vote on anything tonight? Our usage, um, our usage was very conservative. I mean, you, you said, you know, you had to go down, right? So you're assuming people are going to go back to work and not be in their homes as much, but we'll see how that goes. So right. I think you made a very conservative guesstimate. Plus, we have some new, some new things happening in town. So hopefully that will help us out as well, too, with some new houses and some new developments and something like that. So, um, so I think, are we ready to vote on this? Is that what we need to do, Tim, to vote on it? I thought it was just a discussion. Yeah, and I don't think you need to vote. You're not making a recommendation for a change. Um, so right. you, just be holding. So I don't think you need to vote. Okay. Just a review. Thanks, Tim. Sure. All right. Next thing on the agenda is finalize the IMA for regional inspectional services. Has anything in this changed, Joe, since we saw it last? Uh, no, nothing in that has changed. And the only thing I would say has changed is that the uh, uh, Wenham Board of Selectmen actually uh, reviewed it and endorsed it and they plan to um, finalize because two meeting thing, but they plan to finalize it at their next upcoming meeting. So um, they're uh, actually, no, that's, I take that back. Jackie told me today that they have already voted to approve it because they've already started to collect signatures. So once you approve it, we can get their document and have you sign that document. So okay. nothing has changed since the last time you reviewed it. All right, Joe, so walk us through what, yeah, so what, what do we need to do on this to get this up to the next step? You need to I, think, I think just to make the, the last time you uh, agreed with all the document the way it was, and uh, we're waiting to see what happened with Wenham. Um, since there's no changes, I'd just ask you for a vote to um, accept the document as it was presented. And when um, I get it back from Wenham, I can have it here available for you all to sign. Joe, um, could I ask a question? Have we discussed um, the salary differences between um, the uh, building um, commissioner and the building inspector. I think people had asked about that and I wasn't sure what the difference is. And in terms of how many hours he will be working, this person will be working for us versus how many hours we had before. I think it was pretty minimal before though. The number of hours that we had before, we had more of the hours than when I did before or we'll, and we'll continue to have more of the hours. It's a, it, the, the, the split from, according to the document is uh, based a little bit on volume of service, not how many permits are being requested, but it's also on population. So we wind up with about 60, almost 65% of the cost, but also that roughly the same amount of time in terms of the number of hours. 
the, the main thing that's changing in, in this is that we're taking over management of it and we've uh, increased it to be a building commissioner as versus a building inspector. I think we've had a couple of examples recently where we've seen that we could have benefited from having somebody with a higher level of education and certification from the state. Um, so we're hoping to uh, you know keep those things from happening. And we do have uh, a number of different things that are uh, in the pipeline, at least to be considered, whether they'll be approved or not is uh, yet to be determined, but we've got proposals for uh, housing developments, uh, including a couple of affordable housing developments and a, a not affordable housing development, and uh, having a building commissioner who's able to review those against the town bylaws and the state building code and make recommendations is preferable to having just a building inspector who would show up on the job site and determine if something is done um, properly at the site. Uh, this disposition is more um, leading edge and helping helping the process along beginning so. so so what is the difference in the salary i think um i think the, the we've got them at a uh, it was approved in the budget process i think we've got them approved at uh, around ninety thousand dollars a year but um which the other position was um only around 70, but by the time you do the split and the differential, because we pass along some costs to Wenham for uh, managing the contract, our our increase uh, on that hasn't been, is was nominal, it was less than $5,000 difference from what we were paying to to, hit, to Wenham to what we'll be paying now. So we get, um, you know, a, a kind of bigger bang for our buck by managing the contract. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Joe, once this gets approved, what, what positions will need to be filled? We, we, we decided to keep the wiring and plumbing. I'll, I'll re-interview them, but the wiring and plumbing inspectors are stipend in position, so we're not going to go through a full job search, but the building commissioner will have to advertise the position, have a screening committee, and then um, and then a final hiring decision. So, um, you know, it would be helpful to get this done sooner so that I can get that position advertised. I'd, be, I'd like to um, be able to fill it as close to July 1st as possible if we get, if we get good uh, candidates to apply. Currently, um, the building inspector role is being filled in an interim basis by somebody that went hired. That person may be interested in the position and may apply, he may not. Um, we may get other candidates. So I know in the past when Wenham had been in the driver's seat on this, um, one of their complaints was they didn't get very good candidates because the position wasn't very well built out and wasn't, what very, wasn't you know, compensated um, you know, in a, a competitive way with what other towns around us are offering. So this position would be, so we might get a, a larger pool of candidates. Um, I'm interested to see what that, what that yields. Okay. Um, any further discussion from the board on this agreement? All right, I think we need a motion to accept this agreement. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call vote. Darcy? Darcy Dale, aye. Rosie? Rosie Kennedy, aye. Sean? Sean Farrell, aye. Uh, Jamie? Harry Knudsen, aye. And William Olson, aye. Well, I think it's a step in the right direction. I think regionalizing and sharing services with Wenham is a, a goal that we should all sort of see how we can get better services and save money. So I think it's a good model and I think we should start looking at it for as many departments as we can. So thank you, Joe, for leading the charge on this. Thank you. Um, thank you for your support on this. I know that people had a lot of questions when we started talking about this last fall, um, but you know, I appreciated working with both the, the boards of both towns and the, the leadership team in Wenham. And uh, we, I think we have, we've put ourselves in a better position to be able to be uh, proactive when it comes to these kinds of things than uh, reactive, so. All right, so next item on the agenda is the the MOA for patent con con conservation. Yeah, I think George Tarr is here. Um, is here. He sent over a, um, excuse me, an updated um, agreement today. Uh, I don't think we're voting on the agreement today. It's just to kind of talk through some terms and make sure folks are uh, understanding the direction we're going. I've got to close some of the stuff that's in my thing here um, to try and find what we're looking for. Um, George, are you, are you there? Are you able to talk? I, I am. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you all have a copy, I assume now of the, uh, memorandum of agreement, um, that we managed to put together, uh, Lauren Lynch is the one who, who really pushed formalizing, uh, what we were talking about. Um, many of you, uh, probably remember, um, uh, 
discussion back in 2019 when we're when the Conservation Commission was asking for a conveyance or some other uh, method of uh, putting about 6.6 .6 acres of the remaining patent homestead um, under the uh, control and management of the Conservation Commission. Uh, what we have, what we're proposing here is very similar to that. Um, the uh, boundaries are slightly different. Um, the, uh, but this is, this is the best we were able to come up with uh, as far as something that would have at least some uh, legal presence. Uh, initially, I thought a conservation restriction would be the, the best thing to cover all of the remaining open space and what is generally referred to as a patent homestead, but there were objections, uh, fears from uh, Patent Homestead Inc. and, and, and others about the, uh, the use of the space. Uh, I mean, the Great Lawn, of course, is, uh, is, a, is an asset and it's something that can bring some money in and uh, obviously uh, Patent Homestead Inc. wants continued control of that. So. Um, decided to to revert in a way to what we had asked before but frame it as a memorandum of understanding um, you can read all the details in there if you want we tried to sort out exactly what we would be doing and who would be responsible for what um, which was I, I guess it's still in the in flux it's worth some discussion um, I see we have a we have a map here of sorts. Yeah, I, I had uh, I had Pat uh, Shannon before he left us uh, last week uh, take uh, George's map and try to apply a little bit um, more you know uh, clean lines. No, no, no offense to George, uh, just thought this I, would I understand. help him understand a little bit uh, what we're talking about. Um, appreciate all the work that um, that George and Bert Cummins did uh, before he left uh, and to go to Rockport. Um, I think this it gets along. Along of the way, a lot of the way towards the agreement and the discussion that the board of selectmen had uh, the last time you had George and uh, I think Richard was with you last time, George. Right? Uh, we had a conversation about this a, a couple months back. Um, the idea would be to, um, and I, I can bring up the uh, George's agreement. Uh, I can stop share. And are you okay if I take go away from the map for a moment? Um, George had uh, also sent me the. Uh, we weren't looking at the map. If you were trying to share the map, but you didn't see the map. No, I saw the map. Okay, you see the map right now? Not yet. I see it now. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. So it'd be the lighter blue area that would be kind of getting added into it. Um, the, the agreement talks about you know finding a way to you know connect the loop trail. Uh, it offers some uh, you know the idea of kind of creating the uh, the water garden as as George calls it um, there and kind of outlines responsibilities for who would do what uh, with the cons con taking. Uh, some of those roles and uh, the town DPW doing some of those roles. I want to, I do think that we'd like to continue to talk about a little bit more. We need to involve Patton Ridge in it because we need to get access across their easement here so that we can uh, to do the loop trail part of it. But uh, the agreement, if I can start to try to share that one second. Um, you know, that would, back in George, that back triangle is the canoe launch, right? That's that kind of triangle off that point on the map is the canoe launch. Is that right? That's the canoe launch, yes. <clears throat> so, um, right, so if I come back to here, and I should be able to do this here now. And George, the version that we got, you had sent an email, said there were some changes to it, or you had some changes to it, but they weren't in that version that we received? Um, Joe sent you a version today, I think, which was the... Uh, I sent it out late late today. I got it from George this morning and looked through it. And this is what we're looking at here. So um, what I said, initially sent the package, which is as of last week was the most I had. Um, but George got me this today. Um, and so this is a little bit more put in the form of an MOA. Um, we haven't had a chance to have town council look it over yet, but I, I, it looks really, it's in pretty good shape as far as I'm concerned. I had a couple of small questions here, you know, um, you know, the wetlands garden who will do this work, but they answer that down below. Um, they talk about the details of um, the, the, the loop trail and um, involving Patton Ridge folks in the conversation. Um, I just noted that I thought it would, the CONCOM, Con Patton Ridge, Town Manager, DPW should all be involved in that conversation. Um, yes. 
I, I wanted to clarify mowing uh, on the uh, area uh, grassy field has not been mowed so far by the DPW. I just wanted to clarify that we only wanted the DPW to do those areas only once a year so that the grass will grow the rest of the year. I want to make sure that that was what's intended there. And I, I, just a clarification on the Patent Homestead Inc. George uh, has referred to it a, a number of times. Patent Homestead Inc. is a, is a great nonprofit organization. They're, they're uh, a partner to us as far as they've offered us a lot of advice and input and, on how we could try to get things going out there. They don't control um, any of the property and they don't um, really have any authority in that regard. Um, so I just wanted to be clear that here, um, George notes Pat Homestead Inc. as kind of having some role, but I think it's they're more advisory to the town um, than they are actually able to, um, to actually manage things. We, we do that and, and partnership with our licensees, including the one in museum and, and now incubate. So I just wanted to be clear about that in the document. I don't want to have PHI reference where it doesn't have any um, responsibility. So. All right. Okay. Fine. So Joe, I think some of the concerns that we heard last time were, well, and I, I, I you know, the, the, just back up for a second, the MOA, MOA has some great suggestions. I mean, I think it's all about protecting open space and improving what we have for open space, which, what does the list make? So obviously understanding who's funding this and the joint, if it's joint funded or if they're, if they're self-funded or, so that's one discussion. The other thing was the one concern we had heard from those that were scheduling events was that they didn't want to be limited by having to go seek permission by, for the CONCOM by having, Things on the property because maybe they don't that they don't meet you know at regular intervals and it might affect getting something scheduled. So, have we been able to address that concern about with this yeah, MOA I, sort of limit the patent homestead from scheduling events on approval from well, con, con? I think so. I think pretty much if if you know if we look at this area here um, and we might need to adjust the line here, this light blue line. I think we want to look at it and maybe walk it and, and clarify this. Pat just did a really quick and dirty job to try to get what was represented on George's um, maps um, on, on, on a PDF form. But at the same time, this area here, can you see where my cursor is? Yes. Mm -hmm. right, this is this is the pond that would turn into the water garden. And we're just, we just want to make sure we delineate the out exterior line of this because most of what we're worried about as far as operations of patent homestead, um, you know, as a event space or is the incubate space stuff is around here, which is area that would be outside of the MOA. Um, we, we may want to do some more talking here about um, the canoe launch. Uh, they're proposing to, to have kind of stewardship of that area. Um, but we want to, we want to make sure we work out some details on that because, you know, if we have partners up here that want to be able to use the canoe launch, how do we make sure that happens without anybody feeling like um, there's, you know, undue, you know, restrictions, but that, that the conservation commission wants to see this activated more, I think is a good thing and probably shares what some of our other goals with property are. So I think we can work through those things. Uh, like I said, just, you know, fine tuning this outer line here on the, on the, on the map and, you know, working through the, um, the details on, on how, how the new launch might go forward and be used in the future um, are, are things that if, uh, if you all feel we're headed in the right direction, I think we can accomplish that these things with the MOA. Um, yeah, I mean, I want to have the board comment. I had one more comment before I pass it down uh, to others on the board. But um, the other concern that, that we talked about we had was that if, unfortunately, if in the future the town decided they didn't want to continue to support it, but we're glad incubates there and they're doing well, but let's say that in the future we wanted to, we didn't want to restrict the, the sale of the property or the value of the property with any restrictions that might limit its use. So this MOA, does that, does that, void at on sale or is that just um while we own it there's an moa and if we ever sell a property the moa would go away how does that work so if i could add i think it, part of the conversation though too was that you know what would we sell if we decided to sell would we be selling the whole 23 acres or would we try would we be trying to preserve some of it um for um the open space and such and uh, another added aspect of that is if you sell it what are you selling it for um i think that you know, one of the things I took out of the last conversation was that the board was kind of along the lines of thinking, and if I'm, I'm wrong, then correct me and we can, we can work that out. But uh, if, if we go to sell it, the, the, the parts that have the most value to, to a buyer are the, the house and associated barn and stables and stuff, and, a, and an amount of land that would go along with that, a suitable amount of land that would go along with that. The rest of the gift could be kept by the town um, for open space and be protected. Um, and at that point, we could talk about would that become a, a conservation restriction or just continue to be kept in the uh, in the MOA between the town and the and the, and the board of selectmen uh, in the concom or 
or however, but I think that the oh. idea being that, you know, we wanted to make sure that we were, um, you know, preserving, you know, the intent of the gift and also preserving kind of the homestead as opposed to, you know, selling 20 acres that could, you know, be bulldozed. That, and that would be decided, oh. that would be decided later. Right. So that does, that's, we're not deciding that now. We're just, we're right. leaving it open to decide later. Yeah, Darcy, go ahead. Yes, um, I think we want to have all our options open because we never know what's going to happen. We want to be as flexible as possible. We don't want to put any handcuffs on us no. because we don't know. We just don't know what's going to, you know, emerge in the future. So, if we're just protecting it for now and it's part of our portfolio because it is, you know, it's worth something, right? No. I think we should just uh, uh, don't put any pressure on um, doing anything with it right now, other than maybe preserving it the way George has it, but don't get a, um, you know, a, a, um, a situation where we can't be flexible because we just don't know, you know, what that land might be useful for. We just don't. Right. And Darcy, that's, that's the beauty of this document is that it's not a conservation restriction. It's an agreement to preserve the land um, right now and without any permanent intent. I think it's perfect. I think it's a good compromise. So, uh, Amy? so I mean, in 1.1, it does say in perpetuity. Um, so I would have said too. That's yeah, so, but that's that's not. Um, I'm sure uh, our legal counsel hasn't looked at it yet. Um, right. So so that might that language may be altered. I don't, I don't stop there. Um, Bill, um, is a resident Mark Johnson's raised his hand. Yeah, I just wanted to go through the board real quick, and then definitely want to have Mark uh, Johnson speak. So um, I'll I'll go next if you don't mind, Bill. I just, just quick, I, you know, I, I like the idea of kind of preserving some of the space, but it's already preserved at the moment. I guess my, my thought all comes down to cost and staff, you know, what, what kind of cost is this going to be to rehab the canoe launch, to put a gate in, to have DPW do different things out there to make this water garden i mean i guess that's part of the hesitation that i have with it is is manpower and in cost when it's already kind of preserved space at the moment i mean it's not designated per se with an moa or a conservation restriction but we have no intent to do anything with it um that's my two cents and i and i, I think, think obviously I think, people, I, think, right, I think the moa suggests a lot of things doesn't promise anything there's no timeline right. there's no budget so it's recommendations, which I think is fine, but I don't think we're, yeah, Joe, I don't, yeah, it's a good question. Like that next step is putting a plan together for how it would be financed and how, what the schedule would be, but we're not limited by that, by time or money on this MOA, right? None of these things would ever happen, right? They're just recommendations. Right, they're plans, right, George? I mean, but without, oh. without any specific dates or? There's no specific dates, that's true. Uh, budget is discussed. Uh, in the MOA, and uh, Bert had suggested uh, a condition of the MOA that if the land is ever sold, that a, that a conservation restriction be put on it first. And I didn't include that. I didn't think it uh, is the objection about flexibility. I don't think it would work anyway. But uh, there are things that the Conservation Commission would like to do and like to have control over. I mean, the reforestation was one uh, that we, we added in uh, relatively late. Uh, the wetlands garden was, uh, was talked about uh, two years ago. Um, there are some other items in there too. The uh, removal of uh, you know, invasive alien species. Um, the, uh, the loop trail has undergone some modification and we've added a couple of other side trails to it. Uh, and as Joe pointed out, we need to resolve how to, how to go over the this, this swale. Uh, as it stands, uh, I don't think, Catton Ridge has su suggested uh, we should put the trail down to near Asbury Street and go around the end of their, uh, their water system there. Uh, I think that's ridiculous. Nobody's gonna do that. 
uh, what people are going to do if there's no official uh, designated spot or or means of, of crossing the swale, they're going to do what I do. I go down the swale and, and up the other side, uh, wherever is convenient, which is going over to the uh, the grassy field that uh, that is part of the conservancy. Can we, Joe, can, sorry to, to interrupt, it George. Takes, but... It takes into consideration what people are actually going to do. Right. And if you try to force a, a, a trail along certain places, like we can designate a trail along the edge of the, uh, of, you know, the, uh, the open space that, uh, or, you know, the fields that uh, uh, Patton Homestead Inc. would like to manage, uh, but people are going to ignore it. They'll wander wherever they want, which they're perfectly free to do so. Uh, if we can make something more, more enticing in terms of getting over the swale, fine. But if Patton Ridge is not cooperative and doesn't want anything, then we'll just let people do what I do. Um, it's an <clears throat> item that uh, I know it does need some discussion also relates to Patton Ridge. I don't know if you, this is kind of off the subject of the MOA, but it's a question I need to ask tonight anyway. Um, it, if there are any questions about the MOA, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I can put up the uh, detailed map, uh, which will show where, where I think the boundary ought to go, which is, which is a little different from the map that uh, Joe uh, showed you. That was based on actually the 2019 border. Um, if there or anything I is, what yeah, anything I, think is still... I can I can detail that. Otherwise, I'd like to ask a, a different question relating to Patton Ridge. Yeah, go ahead, George. Ask a question, and we're going to get into further discussion. The MOA. Okay. Uh, as uh, as some of you know, we had uh, a memorandum of understanding with Patton Ridge about the uh, mowing around the beaches. Uh, we tried to come to some sort of uh, situation that was uh, more reasonable as far as their their lawn and what was under the beaches, and the MOU kind of fell apart. Uh, so uh, DPW went out and put stakes in along the original boundary, the uh, designated boundary for the 9.1 acres, uh, with the idea that uh, Patton Ridge would mow outside where the uh, where those were, and the what has happened this year is they've mowed twice already and completely ignored ignored the uh, the posts that were put in. Um, I can show you pictures of that if you want to look at it. Um, but basically, what the conservation commission decided was that we need to put uh, more of a boundary between the posts in order to prevent the mowing from going over onto spaces that it's not supposed to mow. So my question is, um, would it be all right if we took boulders out of the stone wall that's on the slope just above the pond and use those uh, as markers between the posts? The uh, stone wall is not visible unless you walk right up to the forest there. Um, it doesn't divide. It, it, I think it's basically on, on the Homestead side, the line between uh, the 9.1 and Homestead is slightly upslope from there. Um, I don't right, So yes, what I, what I would recommend, George, is that, um, is that I think we should have one MOU. So I think if we need to incorporate, um, if you think that one fell apart, we need to, but I think it'd be more clean to have one MOU between Conservation Commission and the patent. So maybe we need to incorporate what you're requesting. Maybe we need to add a line for that in here. And that probably would be beneficial to everyone, but I think it'd be, yeah, have everything in one spot. So I think, I think this, we're not voting on this tonight. It's gonna to get reworked a little bit and have our council look at it. But Joe, maybe we can add that. Um, so you want that added to the MLA? Yeah. If that's what you're saying? Correct. It, it seems it kind of makes sense or at least partially. Fine. Sure, you can do that. Um, I'll just I'll just add one more thing if if I can. It it um I mean I've been out to the homestead a, a bajillion times probably, but I think it might be worth when we start kind of getting into more of the weeds with the MOA here a site walk 
and just kind of talk about where the delineation lines are, where you're talking about the reforesting, where the edges of the water garden are, uh, kind of all of the above and in the canoe launch and in the road to the canoe launch, all that kind of stuff. I think it'd be good to have kind of visual reference. Yeah. I mean, I already have it, but. Yeah. Uh, two you know, years so. ago, ago uh, Joe and Tim Olson and somebody else uh, went with uh, me and um, the representative of uh, Patton Homestead Inc. and looked at all of that. We can do it again. Um, the next At the next Conservation Commission meeting, we're going to try to arrange a site walk for the Conservation Commission to go out and review. And uh, we could uh, include uh, the uh, selectmen at the same yeah, time. Yeah, if, you, if uh, you could invite us on your next Saturday site walk, that'd be great, George. Okay, All right. I will suggest that. I'd like to hear uh, Mark speak because he probably has an interesting perspective on all this stuff. So Mark Johnson, I welcome you to uh, speak up. Uh, okay, hi, hi Bill. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, on behalf of PHI, Patent Homestead Inc., um, I would like to ask for a copy of the uh, of the MOA. Uh, we have not seen either earlier drafts or this draft. Um, we've seen versions of the map in earlier handwritten form, not this, this form, I, I suspect will be pretty much the same. So I'm not worried about that. Um, the idea of reforestation and perpetuity um, certainly needs to be fully understood by the town um, as to what is intended there. So that's, um, once again, that's between the town and the conservation uh, commission, uh, PHI does not have, uh, have anything to do with that. Um, and also for the record, PHI is not talking to anybody and has never been talking to anybody about leasing the canoe launch or anything along those lines. Uh, that is, that is not our role that, it, that anything like that would come between the town and PHI would not be involved. I, I think it's very important that the town maintains full flexibility to allow town residents and users of the homestead uh, to have access to the canoe launch. Um, so to the extent that the MOA has restrictions or authority controlled by the conservation restriction, by the conservation commission, I think there are some, some concerns there. Uh, but once again, that's between the town and, um, and the conservation commission. Um, among the larger concerns I have is that um, there's no budget contemplated or advanced here and patent homestead special fund once again a special fund by the town patent homestead inc made sure that it was fully transparent and the financials are fully transparent on the property um, but the town is struggling to make sure that the property is self-sustaining or is, gets as close as we can and very transparent. And the whole idea that money could be spent from that budget um, towards water gardens and reforestation and things that are not in the priority towards getting the property self-sustaining uh, is of a concern. If, if Conservation Commission has another source of money that's not the Patent Homestead um, a special fund, that's great. Um, but I do worry that finance director might end up needing to, because all money spent at the homestead property, not patent homestead Inc. property, but the town's homestead property, um, needs to be part of this fully transparent fund. So I don't see how outside money, unless they contribute it to the, I don't know, there's something there to be worked out with the, with the finance director. Um, but the idea that some of the very precious budget gets shifted for reforestation or shifted for water garden is um or even just put in for a path across the or across or to the swale um you know i think it needs to be prioritized and part of a, a a real decision that the town makes and not part part of this um i think phi would love to be invited and participate with a site walk uh we were not part of the site walk that george did with um uh, Tim Olson in the past. Uh, it might have been Kaylee Pere, who's the town's director uh, of, of the homestead, but it certainly was not PHI. Um, uh, and I, I, I do think having on the site walk, uh, arranging the loop trail 
and how George intends to access it and let let everybody who's out there figure out what they're the right way to direct people across from because I think a, a loop, finishing a loop is important um, finding the right way to do it is important um, I don't pretend to know one way is better than another uh, but I do think it's it should be a, a group decision um, with a whole bunch of people um, uh, not just a conservation commission on that um, those are the, those are the um, uh, the big so, concerns. Um, so I don't Mark know how you, we do so fundraising. Mark, we'll, for Mark, we'll get you. A, we'll get you a copy of it, and then I, mean, I think we're. I don't think we're approving the funding right now. We're just approving the ability to yeah. to sort of create a master plan. So I think it's probably a future discussion. But we'll get you a copy of it, and you can just review it to make sure that you don't think anything on here conflicts with the goals of of the you know PHI. You can comment on that. Uh, no worries. Our 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 goals is for the town. It's not PHI does not have its own independent set of goals for the property. I just want to. Go on record again for that. Yeah. Joe, have we given this to council yet? I know you said you sent it to us today, but did you send it to council yet? No, I didn't. I, I mean, I figured we were going to have a conversation tonight. And I thought there'd be other ideas and things that would come out of this. So rather than hit them with multiple, multiple emails. And just to be clear, what was in the earlier package, I think Mark thinks there might have been a, an earlier iteration of this agreement. Or what I had, had sent to the packets was uh, a kind of exchange of ideas of what might be included in the MOA, some things that uh, uh, Bert had drawn up, some things I had drawn up. They were just kind of... Uh, uh, to have ideas on what to put in. So uh, George, and I think you said Lauren, George worked on, on the document that you, we got late today. So uh, Mark, absolutely, we'll, we'll share that with you uh, now that we have it. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I didn't have one to share before today, so. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Rosie, anything else uh, you wanna to add to the conversation or Darcy? Do we, are we, we're not voting tonight. This was just a, a, a discussion. Why don't we move on? <laughs> I think that's a great suggestion. I mean, I, I, I think if, you know, we've got a little bit of time here because we've got to get it to council for us to review. Right. And then I think there's some things like Jamie mentioned earlier, the perpetuity thing is, you know, that's problematic. So. Yeah. So Joe, if you can have our council review it to make sure it guarantees us flexibility, collaborative. I, I mean, the first line says in conjunction with other boards and divisions of the town of Hamilton, it's not just on their own. And then I, I, I like it would be formatted um, differently with um, with these you know goals of improvements. Maybe they're not list, maybe they're listed as goals, not as you know. But but I think yeah, I agree with Darcy. Let's move on and uh, let's continue to develop this. Can I can I ask one more thing before we move on? Just to to sorry, <laughs> um, with the kind of there's a lot of my continued concern with staffing and, and budget if maybe a conversation with Tim at some point kind of on manpower and, and, and money here would be, would be great. Yep. There, is, a, there is an item on budget in, in the proposal, in the way that I did not see uh, a reason for many of the expenditures that others have seen. Uh, I don't think, for instance, uh, there was concern that the reforestation was going to be expensive. Uh, we haven't talked about exactly what that would entail, but I don't see that uh, we need to go out and buy a bunch of trees from anybody in order to do that. Uh, and I would also like to uh, at least entertain the idea of having some volunteers, uh, maybe from the high school, I don't know, somewhere, people uh, who might be enthusiastic about uh, reforestation, which is a popular topic these days. Um, I think a lot of things can be done by volunteer work or uh, individual expense. And I don't think the town really needs to worry about it, but I understand why you do. Um, look at the budget section and uh, see what it is that uh, you think the town will have to pay for. And none of this is going to come out of uh, Patent Homestead Inc. Funds. I mean, there was net that was never part of it. Any of any. No, we that. I think we're. I think we're going to. Um, yeah. we have, I think there's a little lot more to discuss here, but um, but let's uh, let's make sure we know when the next concom meeting is, and it looks to be on the agenda. We can talk about it then as well. So, Joe, you you know what to do with it next, correct? Yep. Yep. I'll uh, take care of it. No, I think that, I think this is a I think this is a good step, and um, and I look forward to the continued development of this plan. So Joe, next thing on our agenda is regionalized 
Yeah, I, I wanted to I wanted to ask the board's opinion, um, and I sent the request to the CONSCOM too, so I'm kind of waiting to hear. I had heard from George, but not from from Richard, and I think the Conservation Commission has a, a meeting tomorrow night, so or one Wednesday night or something. So hopefully they'll get back to me after they've had a chance to meet. We've had two um, other municipalities reach us reach out to us about uh, our interest in regionalizing uh, conservation agent. So you know, as you know, we're in the process right now of trying to uh, fill the hole left by Bert Cummins' departure to Rockport. Bert was working for us about uh, 18 or 19 hours a week without benefits. He was working for the town of West Newbury for 20 hours a week with benefits. Um, uh, he it was a, a, was a full-time job with benefits that was being offered in Rockport. And so he went and took it um, and, and we wish him luck. Uh, I'm sorry to lose him. He was, he was great. I loved having him here. Uh, the first offer was from the town of West Newbury. They said, well, uh, we're both going to be in the, in this, position do you want to do you want to look at regionalizing and uh we i still have you know the the town manager that said i still have to talk to my board of selectmen and my client come about it so i, I i'm not saying we do but i want to know if you're interested so I, I wanted to ask you that and then as i was preparing that the town of wenham called me because they're trying to fill their part-time agent position and they said would you be interested in doing this full-time uh, one development to consider is that um george and and richard luongo and um michelle Carol did interview a couple of candidates for the open part-time position last week. I'm due to meet with a finalist uh, Wednesday morning, I believe. Um, you know, IMAs take some time to do. Um, there's a lot of details that we have to work out on the cost share and what is it really going to mean for us. For instance, if we did this with West Newberry, West Newberry's, uh, they were paying for benefits, but their hourly rate was a few dollars lower per hour. Um, so we need to try to work out what would the hourly rate be? Um, what does that do in terms of how we have that on our pay grid? And, you know, what is the new cost to, when we assume a share of the, of the benefits? Um, you know, similar, we'd have to have a similar conversation if we went to do it with Wenham. The important thing to keep in mind, though, is that one of the reasons we lost um, Bert is because um, he was managing two part-time jobs. He was getting paid um, like he had a full-time job and he was certainly uh, had benefits because of the position in West Newbury, but that still left him with a lot of additional uh, anxiety and pressure and figuring out if we had a regional agreement with somebody, they'd have defined what their expectations were in each community and each community would know, um, you know, kind of how to manage that employee and understand that they have responsibilities to, to the other municipality. Um, Bert didn't have that as a backup and, um, you know, I did ask him on his way out the door, you know, if, if we'd had a, a, a formal agreement in place with West Newbury or somebody else, and this wasn't so much you managing the relationships as opposed to the two of us working together to manage you, would that have been, would have, that, that it made a difference? And he said, yes, it probably would. So just, you know, food for thought. I'm not saying we have to have a discussion about it tonight. I would like to know just a kind of a, maybe a, you know, a temperature of the board. Is this something you want me to pursue with the other towns or not? Because I, if you don't want me to, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of effort talking to the folks at Wenham or West Newbury about it. But, um, and if you do want me to pursue it, do you have a preference? Um, we've got uh, two suitors, so we need to know who we want to dance with. Sorry, Darcy, what did you say, Darcy? I, I said, does he, do you have a fact sheet of what you could send us so that we could have something concrete we could look at to see, like maybe pros and cons? Uh, I can develop something like that. I haven't hadn't really uh, done that. I mean, I can I can do that for you. Well, if we have good information, we'll be able to make good decisions. Yeah, I understand. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I I'm in, I think I'm in favor of the of the of looking at it. I think yeah. regionalizing things makes a lot of sense because we get more control over a position, yep. and we save money, right? So, um, so I think the share sharing it with us. So, but what to, I may I may miss it, Joe. But what towns were you suggesting that? Um... Newbury and Wenham. West West Newbury and Wenham were the two towns that that actually called called me and asked us if we'd be interested. So. And that's um, the right number. Is the right, three towns is the right? Is that the third? But it, oh, I think we were just thinking about doing it with one. I want. Oh, um, I, I'm not so. You know, West Newbury definitely feels they needed their 20 hours a week they were getting, and I don't think we want to go below our 18 or 19. Um, so if we were looking to do this, I'd say we were going to, you know, hire a full-time 40 hour a week employee and split them with what split him or her. I don't mean that the, it's more pejorative, not actually right. defining male or female, but split the, that role with one other town. Um, oh, okay. we, we get, you know, either we get, a lot, we get enough work for a conservation commission for 18 to 20 hours a week here. Now, um, we've always kept it under 20 hours to avoid paying benefits, but, um, you know, in some ways that can work against us too. So. 
So I think, yeah, financially, it'd be interesting to see what it, what it would cost. So if you can sort of lay out those things, that'd be helpful. But I'm, um, I think if, uh, if I'm reading everybody correctly, I think we're in favor of continue, if you continuing the discussion and research for it, I think makes sense. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think it would help stabilize the position. It'd have people there longer. I mean, we were lucky with Jim Hankin. We had him for, for a long time, but <clears throat> I think because of the, the way the role is, if, if it continues to be part-time, we'll, we'll just see a revolving door there. You know, if we're not sharing a full-time position with somebody, but, you know, and plus you have to, there's a little give and take with salary and benefits would be splitting or I can't remember if one was under or at the same. Um, but like Joe said, West Newbury was a little bit lower in pay, but they were paying the benefits. So you got to kind of weigh those two together and see how you're going to split it. So since this is in the planning phase, um, Joe, are you planning to go ahead and look at this part-time person next week? I think. Yeah, we, we got too much coming up. There's too much to do. Right. Um, one of the questions that was asked on the screening ground, what, you know, it was just that, Hey, this is something that's been proposed. It's something the town's going to look at, but it may, if it takes place, it'll take a while to happen. Okay. Would you still be interested in this position? And the candidate that I'm going to interview with said that he would uh, under the right circumstances. So, so and this I, is for how many hours? 18? 18. 18 right now. Okay, right. Yeah, so I, I, I would agree. Um, the CONCOM really feels it needs direction and it would be very helpful to have somebody on board now versus waiting six months until this um, issue was... Uh, fully vetted. Yeah. Do okay. like your direction? I, I've got the direction I was looking for. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate your input and the help with that. Um, I will call both of them back and say that we're going to develop a fact sheet and see where they stand. Uh, as I said, West Newbury wasn't 100 percent sure that their board of selectmen was going to go for it, but he wanted to fill us out. And I know Wenham is a little bit more interested, so we'll see where it goes. OK. Joe, that was all I had on my agenda, although the packet had a additional page in it sort of announcing the uh, senior parade. Uh, so that was announced. Now, you don't have the discussion process to change the Board of Selectmen to gender oh, neutral. Sorry, sorry <laughs> yep, I, I do. Yeah, this is the most important thing we're doing tonight. So this is great. Exactly. So last topic is to change the Board of Selectmen to gender neutral select board. So um, we have not had this discussion, uh, but I think it's a great point. And I think um, I'm, I'm in favor of it. And my daughters have bug me to do this. So I'm glad that we're, that we're doing it. So I just want to make sure uh, we're doing the right thing. We do it the right way, Joe. So um, anything we need to do properly to make this happen and have it, and then we can have a further discussion. I just want to make sure before we have a discussion that we're, we have, the, we know the process to change it. Okay. So um, I, that, that, that was provided to you by town council. Tom McAnee provided this a um, week or so ago. Um, and I, it was in your packets. Um, there's, there's two parts to look at it. I'll, I'll, I'll try to, you know, you know, give you the highlights version of it. Uh, you could make a policy decision to just start referring to yourself as the board of selectmen. And that's all fine and well and good. And the board can do that. But uh, the, the technical part of the way it affects our bylaws and everything else would need to be passed by town meeting. So you could do this in two steps. You could make a, you know, at the next meeting or two, um, you could make a, a motion to do this, uh, talk about why you want to do it and all that. And then do it, and then we would start the, the process of formalizing that uh, at either the next special or uh, annual town meeting, as as the board decides to get it onto an agenda or onto a warrant um, for for town meeting going forward. Uh, Wenham just did this uh, at their town meeting, so um, it's not it's something that's happening in a lot of places right now. It, uh, not everywhere. Some some are quicker to do this than others. I believe in the town I live in, the board has done. Um, the policy part of it, but they haven't gone back and made the change in the in the bylaws. Uh, but they have the board has started to refer to themselves as the select board. Um, so, um, well, I I like the idea um, of doing it in two steps, and I this is actually my initiative. I brought it to Joe a couple of weeks ago um, because the state is actually uh, pursuing this, and they would like to see um, most municipalities go this route. So um, I'd like to see it in two steps because the first step is almost instantaneous. And the second one I know will require some funding because we do have to change some language, but we can take our time doing that. Don't you think? I think yes, so. I, I agree. I think it makes sense to do something tonight. I don't think we need to wait. I think we do tonight the first step. And then I think the second step could be over the next weeks and months. Yeah. Yeah. 
it wasn't advertised for a vote tonight. With it, oh, but yeah, I was, I was going to say, you, since you, it's a, you can suspend your rules and, and do it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't okay. do it. I'm just I, I would I would say I, order clarification. That's all. <laughs> as much as I'm in favor of this, I think we have to follow our own policy yeah, with absolutely. our first reading yeah. and stuff like that. So I would count tonight as a first reading and a, a step in the right direction. And I, I agree with Darcy and, and Joe kind of follow suit with Wenham and change our policy among us and then move to bring it to town meeting it in the fall. Do we have a copy of Wenham's policy, Joe? Can you circulate? I don't yet. I can get it for you. I can circulate it, and then um, and then what? Do we have all the proper terms? Because we're members of the select board. Is that how yep. it's? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll make sure that's all put up together for an article or an item either on the agenda for the next meeting on June seventh, and then you'll have all the language and what the motion should read and everything else. And uh, uh, and then in the meantime, I'll get what Wenham did so that we can start to prepare for an article for hopefully STM in the in the fall. And just in case anybody's um, curious as to where I stand on this, uh, Darcy, great minds think alike. You and I, uh, you 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 brought it to me and, and raised it first, but I, it was definitely there in my mind, and I was I was hoping that we were going to get to this uh, sooner than later. So um, I'm I'm thrilled that you brought this up. Um, because I, I don't like to be the one to bring up policy changes, but I thought it would be worth having a discussion about. And so I was thrilled to have you offer that. I'll, I'll vouch for Joe. He told me after he talked to you, Darcy, about it, that he was thinking the same thing. And he's glad you brought it up to him. So good. Uh, Ro Rosie or Jamie, do you have any uh, comments on this? Or uh, we have your support on this? So yeah, move forward. Full speed ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. All right, All right. So Joe, let's put this on the next agenda. and. Uh, and uh, vote on it next, and we'll and we'll have some more dialogue on what Wenham has done to make sure that we're doing things consistently with our with our neighbors. May I make a motion to adjourn? Uh, we have to make a motion to adjourn into executive session uh, to not uh, for purpose number three to oh. discuss. Um, uh, Do discuss I mean, the litigation? litigation or our or bargaining uh, in. When, they, when the discussion open session may have a detrimental effect on the town's bargaining or litigating position. Um, this was what you agreed to do at the end of the executive session at the beginning of the meeting, and it won't take long, I promise. <laughs> uh, uh, so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Or Darcy seconded, and then we'll have to do a roll call vote. And uh, and then, Joe, you will, uh, you will um, uh, kick everybody out of the meeting except for those allowed to be in executive session, correct? Gently, I will gently ask everybody who is not supposed to be there. Mary Alice, you should stick around, but uh, anybody who's not named Mary Alice or a board of selectmen member should um, say thank you, good night. Thank and, you, good night. All right, so we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Darcy? Darcy Dale, aye. Uh, Rosie? Oops. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Sean? Sean Farrell, aye. And Jamie? Jamie Kennedy, aye. Bill Olson, aye. And we got just one more person on, Joe. 